all of you switch to herring hunters. We can commit all the war crimes we want and the allies will still want to be our friend. Then Max surrenders. This is a poisoned gift. Restore the Kalmar Union. You yeah, switch to Moose Militia. Let's kill Germany. Collaboration government of Germany, please. Now. Excellent. When the peace conference comes, I don't have to pay for this. Swedish Germany. It's already mine. So it's communism failing. Yes. I call communism. We can switch to NATO. We can become NATO. Let's do that. We are now NATO. Hello everyone, I am Torior and welcome to Hearts of Iron for Arms Against Tyranny. Sweden is extremely powerful in the new DLC. Is everybody playing Sweden now? Maybe. Well, I've had an idea for a run. See, in my last game as Iceland, Sweden would under no circumstances agree to join the Allies, but they happily joined the Comintern. So why not indulge their desire for communism? We're doing communist Sweden today. What's our ultimate goal? I definitely want to dominate Scandinavia and build a huge industrial base. And then we'll see. We might take over everyone. We might just sell ball bearings to them. Sweden, regular difficulty, Iron Man motor circle focuses. As usual, let's go. Sweden is an industrial powerhouse. We'll have a lot of civilian factories and lots of bonuses to building even more civilian factories. Unfortunately, at the cost of our military, but that can be rectified later. First off, let's do the Defense Act, which will open up other stuff for us. One factory can stay on support equipment, the rest just make infantry guns and give me convoys. Uh, also, don't forget to assign your manufacturer here. This way, it will slowly accumulate funds so we can boost it later. Let's do the same for ships. This doesn't cost you anything. We're going to maximize our civilian industry. I could build in infrastructure in the resource rich provinces to sell more, but we probably will have more to sell than actual people want to buy. So, civilian. I'm picking the provinces with the most slots to maximize infrastructure in and then build there. It's the most efficient way to go about it. We'll get some state-specific modifiers later, but that's not relevant yet. Research, generic. Research and industry buffs. And we start with 12 units which don't have guns. Not a problem. Right, that's about it. Let's unpause and speed the game up. The focus tree is very extensive, and there's also a special one for a Nordic alliance. It's good, but not as good as the main one. In order to go communist, we must go down this way. But for that, we'll need at least 10% support for communism. Ah, choose our leader. Was upon in production, but penalties to changing laws, or less political power? No. Or more research speed? Yes. Gostabaga will lead us. Now, I usually go for ideological stuff first, but we need to get extra communism, and we can get communism from poverty reduction or from the radio. Although that's a bit expensive. So, let's go for poverty reduction, and on the way, we'll get hygienic housing, which gives us very nice state-specific bonuses. Urbanization first, though. We also have two very nice decisions, the Kalmar Union and Nordic Unity. This requires us to have Norway and Denmark, and we'll make all that cores. And this is the same, but we also need Finland and Iceland. Finland will be a bit difficult to acquire. I think I'll go after Iceland and Norway first, and Finland later. Italy does Italian stuff. Oh, let's not forget to make an agency. It's gonna be quite useful. Well, I do want the usual collaboration governments wherever I can get them, but also just having spies and boosting the network will be useful. More research, that boosts research. We could go with the radio, but at our current situation it will boost the democracy. We can then spend political power to switch it over to communism, but that's not the most efficient way. If we align more closely with the Landsorganisationen and then do the radio, it will be communist from the get-go. So, hygienic housing. Also, just look at this wonderful amount of civilian factories we acquire from trade, and also from building them. Now, it would be nice to get out of civilian economy, but that's not gonna happen anytime soon. I wonder, Swedish general election. No, I'm not gonna do that one. This keeps us the same guy, and getting Albin Hansson back gives us extra political power and stability. So, yes, this one, please. War support will suffer, but it's zero anyway. Spies. Go to Germany. And we keep boosting our industry. Let's hire Thorvald for our political power. Oh yeah, and keep doing the agency. I keep forgetting that. Next up, poverty reduction. That will give us enough communism to take the next steps. Industry remains our focus. So, construction 2, decryption of Germany. Continue the second industrial revolution. League of Nations, do I want to embargo Italy? Let's see if they're buying anything from me. They are actually buying chromium from me. It's just one extra factory, 25 political power. No, actually, I'm not gonna embargo them. 25 political power is not that much. Question is, would I buy a factory for 25 political power at this point? And I think I would. I wanna switch my trade to free trade. I'm also curious if this will help me sell more stuff, because I'm not selling all the things I have. We're currently getting eight factories from trade. That's pretty steady. So I'm going to hire the trade guy and see if it changes anything. And it doesn't. Well, at least we've checked. At least it didn't change anything immediately, but maybe others would be more inclined to buy stuff from us. Now, before continue the second industrial revolution finishes, I want to switch my research over, because this gives two very good bonuses for industry. I am going to switch mechanical computing into improved machine tools, so we don't waste our bonus on that. And we also get it relatively early. Now, that being done, align more closely with Lands Organization. Now we can go to free trade for just six 
60. Let's do that. Oh, I am getting 10 factories from trade now. Maybe he did work out after all. Seem to be selling more tungsten and steel. Finish mechanical computing now. Now we can't do that yet. Not enough communism. We could rectify that by doing affordable housing or the radio. Or possibly hiring this guy. He also boosts research. Let's just do on the radio. It gives other nice stuff too. The suffragette is... Yeah, I don't want that. Stability penalty. <laughs> That's minus 18 stability if you boost her sufficiently. Not worth it. Computing machine. Let's hire the army organization expert so we can start getting army experience. Oh, and I forgot to keep boosting my agency again. Radio is here. Concentrated industry too with a nice bonus. And just look at all the stuff radio gives us. Nice. This is the next one we want. Strike the capitalist beast down. But we don't have enough communist support so let's do something else in the meantime. State paid vacation for more political power. And construction three ahead of time. Because with the bonus it's worth it. Now the hygienic housing policy is an interesting modifier. Extra civilian factory construction speed. And it will spread to nearby states. So we can use that to determine where we're building first. I think it's time for a unit template. Now for our next moves we need something small like this but without the cavalry. So let's duplicate it and switch all the cavalry for infantry. It's just eight width. I know it's very small but it's all we need. Why? Well because we're going to invade Norway. Norway has a very long border so we need a lot of divisions. Doesn't matter if they're strong or not. So all of you switch to herring hunters and we'll also make more of those. As many as you can please. And we have 20 percent communism that's enough to start strike the capitalist beast down that will switch us to communism fascist counter-revolution yeah we need to do this focus otherwise we'll have some serious trouble so let's prevent a counter-revolution radio committee against the finnish white terror interesting breakthrough against minor countries this is pretty good if you want to fight finland we have some decent advisors here but i'm not going to take any of them yet we'll have better options soon also i'd like to go to war economy or at least partial mobilization but now it's not going to happen for a while let's not recruit an operative yet we'll get a German one. Exercise troops. We're also going to need some commanders. We have a lot of high-level generals and even one who's going to be perfect as a field marshal. So Carl, congratulations, you are promoted. Also I am communist now so we could start just final war goals and I think it is time. Just get a bit more political power because I don't remember how much exactly we'll need. Let's go to an even 200 before we start. All right so what I'm going to do is attack Iceland and the Norway. Why Iceland? Because they're a puppet of Denmark and if I attack Denmark Iceland will declare independence. We're not going to let them. We're just going to attack them directly. So let's justify on Norway. 155 days, that's fine. Then we justify on Iceland. 275 because they're the second one. And now, crucial part, I'm gonna cancel my justification on Norway and start it again. And now they are the second one, so the justifications will finish at the same time. This is my way of minimizing potential guarantees, because we'll be generating less world tension and attacking them at the exact same time. Now, German spy please. Let's do a collaboration government in Germany. I only have two agents, so it's gonna, you know, make my network disappear. But let's do it anyway. Don't really want to get an intelligence guy here. Oh, right. Let's make sure to prioritize operations and garrisons. Yeah. Aid Icelandic workers. They're not hungry enough. We already have a special hunger thingy. So we are a perfect fit. Ringleaders exposed. That's the counter-revolution thing. We can promote them out of power to lose stuff or prosecute them to get extra stability at the cost of some war support. And actually, war support is quite useful to us, but it's fine. Let's prosecute them. Get even more stability. And I have enough army experience to do ideological loyalty for weekly manpower. Make that happen. Manpower manpower is something we have very little of, so this will be quite helpful. Oh, damn it. I missed selecting a new focus. That's gonna lose us some time. Let's liquidate the monarchy. Get rid of the king. He has been damaging our political power gain for long enough. Actually, this is pretty interesting with communist Sweden. See, our current guy dislikes in the USSR. He's an anti-Stalinist Marxist, but he does like the Germans. So that means, as communist communist Sweden, I can actually join the Axis right now. Pretty cool, eh? It does not align with my plans, but I can. Chinese United Front, not my problem. Ah, and the operation in Germany happened. Fate of House Bernadotte. This is a pretty powerful event because not only do we remove the king who was detrimental, we also take the stuff which is gonna let us build things faster. Next up, refuge from the war. This is going to provide us with some manpower. Time to boost our forces. Remember to use uh, the company. It's a small political power cost, but it's worth it. The Allies form. And now this. Refuge for revolutionaries. This is actually a very, very powerful focus. It essentially gives you all the world's communist political advisors that have been expelled from their specific countries and whatnot. Let's save some political power to employ them. 
Okay, deploy more troops. Yes. Go to the Norwegian border. Get ready to fight. We're also attacking Denmark, so let's make sure to secure their border as well. Improved infantry equipment. How long until we attack? A focus and a bit. All the wonderful manpower we got from all over the world. And now it's almost time for advisors. We have that many currently. And now, just look at that. All the advisors. Make sure to pick the best ones. Nazim, the revolutionary author. 15% political power gain, 5 stability, 5 war support, and even communist support. Exactly what we need. And I can afford one more. We could fire Herman. We're going to replace our trade minister with Bolesław Bierut, the Polish advisor, a socialist autocrat who gives 20% political power and extra communist support. Here we go. Now we're getting a decent amount of political power. Let's establish the Politburo and deploy more troops. I don't need to guard against a naval invasion because we'll have naval superiority. I just need to send my ships out. So some of you help this defense here and the rest will support our attack on Norway. Super aggressively, please. Well, they finished their first collaboration government on Germany with four 45% efficiency. Excellent. Now get ready for another. Sport weapons too. And we have enough funds to boost our company. Reinforced stocks for our guns, please. And we now have to create a variant of our gun to add the company, like so, and use that. Lost some efficiency, but not a lot. And the guns will be stronger. Up to 37 factories. How much from trade? 10. Well, I did fire the trade minister. Okay, where do we build next? I'm going to look for a place that has the modifier from hygienic housing. A lot of them have it. So here, here, and here. Which has the most slots? This one. So we're going to build things in Gavelborg. We can easily get more slots later. Archers of Austria, not my problem. Infantry expert, please. Assign our air force to this guy. It's time for the navy. Let's set it like this and just set them to, let's say, strike force. All over here, so the Danish cannot naval invade us. Oh, political changes. Kilbom moves to oust the flig. And we have an interesting choice here, because our current guy lets us be communist and ally Germany. We can exchange him for a guy that likes the allies while disliking Germany and the Soviet Union, which basically means that we can commit all the war crimes we want and the Allies will still want to be our friend. He also gives war support. Or we could befriend the Soviets. The Allies sound like the right choice here. Here we go. Nice glasses. And we have enough war support to go into early mobilization. That's not really worth it. I will go partial if we could. No matter. We'll get more war support later. Make another collaboration government against Germany. Stop exercise. Get ready to fight. We're going to take this slow. First we take out Norway. Then we can focus on Denmark or Iceland. No aggression pact from the UK. I don't really need those. Justification is ready, and so is Politburo. Now what I'm gonna do is government weapons contracts. Small boost for infantry weapon research. And of course, declare wars on Iceland and on Denmark. Sorry, and on Norway at the same time. And Denmark is the overlord of Iceland, so they automatically get called in. Also, offensive doctrine, please. And we can't afford the other one yet. Go. As you can see, this is not defended. Denmark surrenders. This is a poisoned gift. You can, of course, accept the Danish surrender and then jump through a lot of hoops to annex them. However, they have ways in their focus if they're a subject to just declare independence and there are decisions to annex them which are difficult to go through so we could spend a lot of industry and political power to annex them or i can just kill them normally and then make them a core forcefully through a decision this will cost me stability but i think is the right choice so no denmark i do not accept your surrender first though we eliminate Norway. Concentrated three and boost production efficiency gain for our weapons. We've decrypted the Soviets. Who's next? How about Italy or Finland? Maybe Finland. I'm actually gonna give you some manual orders because this could be going much faster. Just go along the coast, please. They do not have enough troops to defend themselves, so we can just go in between them. Wait your turn, Denmark. Now, of course, if I accepted the Danish surrender, I could gather their forces for free and all that, but it's really problematic to have them as a subject. Kind of like Yugoslavia. Oh, you surround them and you take these bits here. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. Government weapons contracts complete. People's Commissar for Defense. And when we end this war, I'll be able to go to partial mobilization at least. Here, there, there, and attack from this side. Here, there, there, and take their territory. Better guns with a bonus. Yeah, don't just gang up on them, go between them. They have insufficient troops to defend, make use of that. Killing their troops is unnecessary, taking territory is what it's all about. I suppose I could have used cavalry to make this faster. All right, we got funding for all our military industrial organizations. Let's just pick something for each. As you can see, there is not much time left for Norway. Let's be patient. We we don't really have anything better to do right now. There goes Norway. I am going to just annex them all and take their fleet. Thank you. Next up, Denmark or Iceland? Denmark. Iceland has declared independence, but that's not going to help them because they're also in the war. Let's do meticulous preparation here. And war propaganda. We need that a lot. Prepare naval invasions of Denmark. Denmark at this point doesn't have a lot of troops, but fighting across the strait can still be very draining. And I would rather avoid it. This should suffice.
course. In the meantime, the six of you might want to try and get across the strait. If you do, great. You probably won't. No, okay, stop it. We'll attack them from the other side. I'll activate when they're all in position. And you get to a port so we can reinforce. Ready? Yep, go. I do like when an invasion comes together. And it will, because we've taken a port up here. In that case, you guys can transport. Hmm. We failed to get any ports here, but it's gonna be a good distraction. Regardless. Go. Oh no. No, don't lose the port. You, stop them. As you can see, we've lured their troops in here, and the islands are almost undefended. Let's do universal basic income. This is actually pretty powerful, because you start with 0% resistance and 25% compliance in whatever you conquer. That all gives other boosts. Go. Take Copenhagen from all the sides. Viborg, Kolding, and we're about to beat up all the Danes, actually. Right, got everything except the capital. Get over here. Won't take much longer now. Oh, public unrest. That's gonna be bad. I should have acted a bit faster. You know, in that case, we want to end this quickly, don't we? Uh, let's get this army ready to invade Iceland so we can finish this. Right, invasion army dispatched. Navy will join them in a moment. And unyielding defender. Copenhagen will fall soonish. Get the navy over here. Just these three zones, because it might be helping here a bit. I should go to patrol. I think I need more intel up north. No accessible regions. The hell? Oh, you can't leave here before we beat up Denmark. No. Why don't I just rebase all of you here? Hmm. Oh well, we'll just split the fleet that escaped. That's fine. And activate the naval invasion of Iceland. They're launching. Oh, they haven't even all arrived yet. It's fine. In Copenhagen, taken care of. Denmark capitulates. I will annex them. Having them as a puppet, as I mentioned before, is dangerous and problematic. So we just annex everything. And you know what that means? That means we can take the wonderful decision to restore the Kalmar Union, which will make all of this my core territory. First, let's let everything update. We have 44 factories and 100,000 manpower. And a bit. Now we take the decision. Restore the Kalmar Union. We're now the Scandinavian Socialist State, and all of this is my core territory. Everything update. Unification of Scandinavia. Up to 68 factories. And, well, total manpower says there's more, but I didn't actually get it. Oh, no matter. We'll get more. So yeah, there goes Denmark, and I'm gonna have strikes in 22 days, so we'd best kill Iceland before that. Now, Iceland doesn't really have much, but it has the potential. It's quite a lot of boosts to factories and such in their focus tree. So I'm actually considering making them a puppet temporarily. Oh, we no longer have hunger and cold. We have enough factories. The furnace heat is well, heating us up. No enemy cipher being decrypted to Italy. More factories. We have landed in Iceland. Do they even have troops? They might not have troops. No, they have one. And my agent got captured by the Germans. Oh, wonderful. See? We got two collaboration governments with 45% success. Do we rescue him or do we let him die? I guess I could rescue him. We have enough collaboration government in Germany to do whatever we want with them. I think we'll do the Soviet Union next. I also want to invade Finland, but we have to time this right so they are not guaranteed. Anyways, Iceland. Here we are. All the territory is mine. This has one military, three civilian, and one naval dockyard in terms of factories. I'm gonna take a risk. I'm going to puppet them, add war reparations. They don't have any resources. And that's it. I'm going to let them get extra factories from their focus tree and then annex them. If everything goes right. Workers Republic of Iceland. Let's have a look at their focus tree. Okay, it didn't update yet. Wait a day and then have a look at their focus tree. Okay, they went with Kingdom of Iceland, not not our king, so break with the crown is not available to them, they cannot become independent that way. Then there's also American protection, but for that they must be democratic or non-aligned, so they can't break free that way either. Okay, good. Well, in that case, how much can they get from their focus tree in terms of industry? That's two factories. Oh, off map, so I will not inherit them, that's unfortunate. So that's three dockyards, two military factories, oh, and another military factory. So three dockyards and three military factories from here. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. We could also use them to actually create a faction and do the thing here. I will consider it. Hey, we're no longer at war. Strikes are not a danger, and we are at 34% war support. Still getting some more from war propaganda. Can I reach 50 to the war economy? I could, but I would have to wait very long for it. Essentially until the Germans attack, so that's another year to have enough world attention for it. So let's not wait and do partial mobilization, please. Goodbye, penalties to construction speed. Now, look at that. Three boosts from construction, 15% from free trade, 20% from royal wealth, 25% from Volkemet, and 12% from hygienic housing policy. Also doubled by infrastructure. That's some very quick construction. I like it quite a lot. One problem is manpower. I should have way more from Norway and Denmark, but we'll increase our conscription laws and it will be fine. Get home, everybody. Exercise a bit. We'll make more of you when we have the manpower. When you're done with what you're doing, let's get some thoughts on the German border. Five levels should suffice. And a bit of anti-air. I do not intend to fight the Germans in the near future, but it's good to be prepared. Also, I might not intend to fight the Germans, but the Germans might have other ideas. Munich agreement. Okay. I'm going to wait with my attack on Finland until the Soviet Union starts doing stuff there. Hmm, Finnish buffer state. This doesn't actually align me with Finland. 
I could also do Scandinavian Defense Union, which would create a faction with my puppet Iceland and unlock this tree. Perhaps I should. Socialist reforms are gonna boost our production quite a lot, but it's not time for that yet. Oh, I could use this to do war economy in just two focuses. I made a mistake going to partial mobilization. Yeah, let's go with that. Scandinavian Defense Union. Improved work conditions, please. Rescue captured operative. I mean, I could just get a new one, but let's not be assholes about it. Build, build, build. Infantry equipment to mass and rifle production and start making the better gun. Let's use Kungliga. Oh, that's cumulative. 25% industrial research speed boost. Nice. Extend the time of preparedness. And we can go to war economy with that. I did waste a lot of political power going to partial mobilization, but it should still be worth it to switch. Machine tools. Germany likes me. Cool. I could invite them to my faction. I mean, we could be friends. Beat the Soviets together. Germany claims mammal. Not my problem. Let's accept the... What's that? Salzjobaden agreement. Although, you know, let's form the Northern People's Union first, because we'll be getting weekly manpower from it. And I could use some manpower. Military theorist, please. And you can now make doctrines. Superior firepower is my choice. You might not have noticed, but there's a new special forces doctrine thingy. I might use it once we fill the regular doctrine. Extra air experience, please. Naval reform. And that's decrypted Italy. Who do we decrypt next? Oh, we rescued the operative. Uh, go to the Soviet Union, everybody. Maybe you'll survive. Then again, we already have the network in Germany. How about we infiltrate their army first? We already have 90% cooperation in Germany, which is excellent. So next up is the Soviet Union, but an infiltrated army will serve us well. Also, I think once we've done this, Iceland can join our union and get benefits from that too. Let's have a look, you know, since we're in the same alliance. Oh no, they need to be independent. So that's essentially worthless for us. It's only for cooperation. We would need to say ally Finland. Yeah, well, I can dismantle my faction after this. We are already getting our weekly manpower. I think it's time for an extra research slot, so let's accept the agreement. Make more civilian factories. Always the civilian ones. Support weapons 3. Maybe I should have left them, because now we're preparing a different one. Hey, we're up to 80 factories. How many does Germany have? More. We'll probably have to start doing military industry soon, but we still have time. I could try and help the Allies survive, but that's not necessarily in my best interest. I think I'll wait with any major engagements until Germany and the Soviet Union are fighting each other. Motor Ribbentrop. And let's get an extra research slot. More ciphers. Who do we do next? Come on, more industry. I think we can keep doing that for a while longer. Uh, we shall not invest in Turkey. Probably commence the army infiltration and then we'll be out of Germany. Some more decryption. Let's do uh, Romania and Hungary. And the pills. We could start working on the best guns, but I'll need a bonus for that. It's too much ahead of time. So, support. Artillery. We have a lot of political power, finally. Let's go to extensive conscription. I might want to hire this. 16% attack is a lot, even if we have to pay with stability. But I don't need to do that right away. Advanced computing machine. Mobile defense. Okay, Poland is attacked. Poland joins the Allies. We don't join the Allies. We get an extra research slot. Should I do the ball bearings thing? Yeah, let's max out entire here. Actually, increase the force a bit as well. Let's do atomic research because it boosts all other research. Maybe some defense or invisible ink. And Poland capitulates. So does Lithuania actually. What do we do next? Let's do the Finnish buffer state. It doesn't actually cost us anything. It gives us stability and war support and manpower. Finland accepts Soviet demands. What? They wanted to justify on you. I suppose the allies are at war with Germany now. Oh, but not Italy. That's strange. Still, they have bigger things to worry about than me attacking Finland. So I'm going to try and improve relations with the allies. And when that's done, I'll justify on Finland. Your sire occupies instant Poland. Yes, that was to be expected. Finland has 30 factories. My small army should be sufficient to kill them though. I guess I can make some more troops. Yes, I know they're not very strong, but they're strong enough and that's what matters. Right, they like me already? A bit. Let's justify a war goal. Won't take too long. Just 4% war tension. Hopefully no guarantees will happen. And anti-air. Once we're done with Finland, I'll start transitioning my army into, into higher quality troops. Let's also send one spy to Finland just to build up the network. Let's do Husqvarna weapons factory. No guarantees. Good. General pressure towards the Benelux. And I can invite someone into my faction. Who? Estonia. That's interesting. They do have a non-aggression pact with the Soviets. Oh, 31 factories. I mean, I can kick them if it's necessary. I mean, sure, why not? Let's uh, invite them to a faction. I'll kick them if I have to. More defense for the infantry equipment. We stand together. And Netherlands capitulate. I wonder if Germany will actually attack me or not. I don't think they will. Let's get our troops ready to invade Finland. Another army just goes to the border, and you guys will prepare to reinforce the naval invasion. Get ready for that. More artillery boosts. We'll start making it after the war with Finland, I think. Same with entire Better production efficiency for our artillery. And let's switch to work on the way. We do have the political power to do so. Exiled Communist Military Council. 16% attack is a lot. Let's take them. Even with the negatives. Luxembourg under attack. Iceland's up to 8 factories. France under attack. Let's do socialist reforms. We actually switch this research because now we can start making the best guns with a great bonus. And they do boost essentially 
all of our troops, so it will be worth it. Relocate the navy, full of Paris, and Hungary joins Axis. Well, we are friendly with Germany right now, so no problem. And France capitulates. And Germany, how many factories do you have? All the factories. Yeah. Our justification on Finland is ready. Are you guaranteed by anyone? You're not. And I am ready to attack. Let's do that. Actually, Finland has so many crazy bonuses that I think it will be wise to retain them as a subject. Let's attack and not call anyone in. So, um, go. Oh, right, the navy. Naval invasion support here and here. End of the League of Nations. Doesn't really matter. Are we actually invading? Yes. We're invading from the north and also getting ready with the naval invasions. Let's activate those. Hopefully they'll be too busy in the north to defend properly. All right, we have two ports already. Stop your invasion. Get the regular order. Attack. Same with you guys. Go. Ah, beautiful. Just too many vectors of attack. We don't seem to have enough to stop that. White death. Sure. That's not gonna help you. Do we worry about them or do we not worry about them? I mean, we're about to win anyway, so let's ignore them. Resistance target. Yeah, that's not gonna be a problem again. We're gonna make them a subject. And if we decide to annex them, we'll make the territory core immediately, so it won't matter either. Oh, we could modify our modifier. <laughs> we could modify Polkemet so that it no longer stops military factory construction. Well, it doesn't stop it, it just makes it uh, slower. But I'm doing quite well just making civilian ones for now. Same with this, see Caesar Landsberg. I think I'll just keep boosting my economy with these focuses. State planning committee. You, there. You, here. Capital is already ours, so let's take their new capital. They'll make a great buffer state against the Soviet Union. Just, just a subject buffer state, not an independent one. White death, yeah. Ten... Percent white war support? Are you joking? I'm winning. This should only happen if you're not winning. Be extra aggressive. We're almost done. Yep, almost done. Ninety-seven percent there. Trade agreement. Oh, we captured a lot of equipment. Nice. Oh, I'm going to satellite two countries. We can then benefit from focus trees. Stack civilian stuff on that, and also puppet Finland with everything else. Stack that on everything. Same with resources. Also, give me a fleet. Confirm and exit. So we have Finland, Sapmi, and Karelia, and they have the generic focus tree, which is actually quite powerful because each and every one of them will get if they have sea access they'll get dockers from this but also three military factories and four civilian factories which is excellent let's research uh, the truck underground resistance uh, what oh it will be cancelled let's see do they have something that will grant them independence doesn't look like it okay good 120 factories because i'm taking theirs well not all of them oh embraced by the white death was temporary excellent oh right and we have the decisions to trade ball bearings with everybody and there's a lot of candidates i'm going to for the time being trade ball bearings with everybody starting with germany so we can choose extra stability and manpower or army experience which is pretty nice actually if we stack that we could get fighters really cheaply oh no sorry germany then gets that a research bonus not that big or you know nothing stability we have decent stability we could we can do eight of these traits which would mean 16 stability and quite a lot of weekly manpower but we're already getting the manpower from other sources or 160 army experience which is almost two doctrines let's get the military thing from each of them yes military expertise please yes again from everybody Ellie rejects oh give me the military expertise great news great news all around this is good but it embargoes germany so there's no need to do that too early Let's go this way. 10% attack and speed is quite a lot. Integrated support. And let's do flexible organization. Got a lot of guns in reserve. Good. So we're done with all those civilian factories. Oh, damn it. Soviet Union declared war in Estonia. Did you have like a non aggression pact? I don't really want to join a war against the Soviet Union right now. It would be a pity to lose Estonia, but I am not ready. And I don't have my collaboration governments on the Soviet Union ready yet. What? I need a transport plane for this. The hell? Maybe if I wait a month, it'll change. But you usually need a transport plane for this. Oh, I have 12, so it doesn't matter. Okay then. Do that. I need to start making other stuff soon. So trains, trucks, anti-air and artillery. Sorry Estonia, I can't afford to help you right now. I doctrine in battlefield support. Sorry Estonia, they got my agent again. Yeah, that's the problem with spying on the Soviets, they're really good at counter espionage. Let's get some more troops in the field, more harrying people. Lion in the north? Of the north? Yeah, whatever. A lion and another doctrine. I like having so much political power. I radio propaganda. And how about promote urbanization in our capital? Boost support companies and boost support companies more. I'll be adding hospitals, I think, because we're having a difficult time with manpower. Come on, comment this. Need more. Need more network again. I'm going for one full army group and also guarding ports, both ours and our subjects. Just the ports though, but I will need more troops for this. Anti-democratic raids and long hours, good pay policy. Hmm. Efficient, production efficiency growth increase. Uh, once we finish researching the best guns, we'll do that. Our current efficiency is 96% with a cap of 103. Cool. Deploy troops, 30. Is that going to be enough for all the ports? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Exercise. Recon company and the navy doesn't actually have to keep doing anything. Also, let's reorganize them. Better field hospital. Time for some more industry. 
infantry, because I've joined the Allies, not really my problem right now. Preemptive strike just gives me a war goal on Germany, which is not necessary at the moment. How about some affordable housing? Well, with promoting urbanization, we got a lot of new slots in Stockholm. Should probably do that in other places too. Well, I do have the power. Sure. More. Some heart attack and piercing for infantry guns. And we start producing infantry equipment 3. Let's also enact the long hours good pay policy, which is going to increase the efficiency of production. Hey, you finally launched the mission. Took you long enough. These units are not very good. They're just this. I should modify them. Let's make a duplicate. Can have the herring. So it's gonna be a moose. Some alliteration will be fine. And I'm going to be expanding this template. First, let's switch all of these guys to it. I will probably have insufficient manpower. And again, we could go to service by requirement. We'll probably have to. Ah, Germany attacked the Soviet Union. Good. We're almost ready to take on Germany. Although perhaps this is too many units. I'm going to create a new template, just one cavalry battalion. I'm going to switch two of my armies just to that. That will free up a lot of manpower and some equipment. Germany breaks motor Ribbentrop. Yes. Yes it does. We will attack them for it when the time is right. Now I'm gonna stack all these troops on the border so we can see exactly how much more supply we need. Also start modifying the template. Have some engineers and some recon. Maybe motorized recon? Motorized recon gives a bit more recon but it also needs fuel. Let's do cavalry. Cavalry is quieter. It's border artillery and support entire. As it's now, start making military factories. Although more urbanization. I need someone to put those military factories. Supply is sufficient for now. Hmm, German defense isn't. Two more military factories for this. And concentrated industry four. Also, assembly line. Well, that's a lot of slots. We need more civilian. No, it's time for military factories. Just look at the numbers. Just finish these and then do military. That's a lot of factories from trade. Who's buying what? Germany is buying five factories worth of stuff. So not that much. The US is buying a lot of steel. Don't you have tons of steel of your own? Maybe mine's just better. Artillery boosts. They will only attack Germany after they've exhausted themselves a bit if, against uh, the Soviets. Our first collaboration in the Soviet Union is complete. 30% success, so we need to do two more. I think it's finally time to starve our enemies of iron. 10% factory output is a lot. Hey, all the competing machines are here. Better anti air, please. Add the field hospitals. Agent killed. Oh. And some line artillery and infantry. Let's see if we have enough manpower for that. We don't have enough artillery, but I'll do that soon. Anti tank. Germany is actually not defending themselves here. How long would it take to justify on them? 20 days only. But we're waiting for the perfect moment. Support weapons. Up to 170 factories. Now, embargoing Germany will reduce that a bit. Engineers and better artillery. New spy, a Soviet one, please. Do the thing. Time to focus on military factories. So, we seize Landsberg. Corner angered the Germans a bit. Let's hire the artillery expert and the ground support guy for planes and naval experience for navy. Also, we finish the concentrated industry thing, which means military factories all around. Everywhere, please. Our industry shall have no equal once we kill everybody else. See, that's what I like, having a lot of civilian factories so we can quickly build all the other stuff we might need. And again, I might have overdone it a bit, we might not have enough slots for stuff, but I can always build in puppet territory. Now, Iceland, is it time to annex you yet? We not yet, but soon. Here, have some factories. Oh yeah, I also have the islands, I forgot about them. Here you go, a factory. Supply could be better. Let's boost the railways. Should I build a regular supply depot around here as well? Or are the ports sufficient? Let's build a normal one as well. Add one more. See, Landsberg is done as the barometer falls. War games. Oh, Germany has boosted their cipher a lot. Japan attacks the Dutch East Indies. US joins the Allies. It's almost time for us. Defense in depth, please. I kind of ran out of slots for military factories. Can we do some more urbanization? I can't trade ball bearings with Ethiopia. That's something. Military expertise, please. Let's switch our research. I need to do concentrated five of room for stuff. And suddenly we have a military industry. Now just to fill what we lack and we can go to war. Although I do have to go to service by requirement. Otherwise my troops will just not be strong enough. Also use a field marshal level order. Now, I could try and do naval invasions, but that's risky and I probably don't have to. I should cut through them here. They will not be ready. Only the core stuff, please. Better artillery. Oh, I'm running out of steel. That's unexpected. We need to go down to export focus then. Hedgehog defense. We're gonna build a lot of military factories in Finland and then reduce their independence so we can use those. Artillery. Hmm, only have enough manpower. Maybe it's time to modify the template again. How about some more infantry? And maybe some more artillery. That should do for now. Hospital. And I should probably do excavation afterwards. Long hours, good pay. I might have overdone it on the civilian factories a little bit. So what happens if we take this? Oh, this slows down civilian factories and speeds up military factories further. Should probably do it. Gotaverken. Since I'm basically only building military factories now. I don't like this requirement. I can't go past this focus because I need a ranger leader. What do you need to be a ranger? Fight in forests. What more infantry to the moose militia. I could also add some line anti-air. Hmm, it's probably not necessary. All right, with a double bonus, our falcon actually increases our war support and military factory construction speed. Good. I can do more urbanization decisions. Standardized equipment. Well, we should have done that earlier because we still have severe lack of ammunition and it's going to remove it. How are you doing, Germany? Not so well. I might have added too much artillery to my units. Maybe I can buy some. It's not good artillery. That's something. Let's buy it from our subject. Buy all 
the support equipment and artillery we can. And the tire. And infantry weapons too. Why the hell not? We're supporting our own subject that way. Gimme. I suppose I could join the Allies just for the land lease. Now let's do excavation. 60% collaboration in the Soviet Union. That will come in handy later. The Soviet capitulated. It took them quite a long time to do this. And Greece still exists. Improve working conditions. Ah, we can lower independence of Iceland. Let's do that. Same with Finland soon. Did that help with the factories a bit? Oh, yes, it did. Much better. Oh, with this, we can further increase the speed of constructing military factories. Should probably do that. Volvo. Is 22 a good width? Should be fine, yes. We'll have some manpower in reserve, and we can always switch these around. Lower. Finish independence. We have 53 military factories. The military factories go from 53 to 66. Oh, and I've finished concentrated industry, which means military factories. Buy more stuff. Everything is going well with the exception of artillery. I need way more artillery. Vichy front joins. Is that a problem for me? Not really, not right now. You guys are just missing artillery. When that's rectified, we can go after the Germans. Because they are being pushed back, it seems. Acquire modern panzers. Even more war support. The last collaboration government against the Soviets, please. Extra attack for artillery. Germany requests a resource rights. Interesting. So, what happens if I attack them? Will I lose those factories? Sure, I'll do that and then I'll kill them. Okay, they took quite a bit of steel from us. No matter. Germany can't take my resources when there's no Germany. And it does boost my construction speed. It's still a little while before I attack them. Yes, I know, we're playing the long game. We're being patient. I want one overwhelming strike with minimum casualties on our side. You guys can switch to the Herring Hunters. I might have a use for you yet. We do have the manpower and the guns. Soviet Union attacking south. Is it time to go yet? Yes. Yes, it is. We're good to go. I want to attack Germany, but I don't want to fight Japan. So how about we justify on, say, Hungary? 90 days. That's a bit much. How about Romania? Longer. Yeah, I, I see no reason to fight Japan. How about Vichy France? 90 days as well. I guess I'll do Hungary. 90 days. Get ready. Also, we actually have so much equipment that I can switch another one of my armies to the proper template, I think. Yeah, switch to Moose Militia. We're missing some artillery, but the ones on the front lines are already equipped, and these guys will soon receive it and they can join. For now, just exercise a bit. Keep boosting. We have acquired modern panzers. What's next for us? Actually, if we're going this way, we can boost our military factory construction speed even more, although we would lose some stability. Let's do militar cycle or whatever. Military cycling. Should I give them medals? They do cost a lot of political power, but I finally have some use for it. Hmm. Hit points, red star. Let's do the red star. Yeah, this is micromanagement. I don't like micromanagement, but at least it's a way to spend our political power. Oh, can I get two red stars? The second one is more expensive. Let's not. Anything else to spend the political power on? Not much, honestly. Get more red stars. Maybe Hero of the Revolution would be better. I'm not sure. Yeah, I like this. You can be the Hero of the Revolution. Now, the most difficult part about fighting Germany is not going to be defeating Germany, probably. It's going to be having the most war score, so they capitulate to me, and I can use my collaboration government, as I should. I ran during the Axis. Okay. So, what I need to do is engulf them, so they can't, you know, strike back properly, and then fight as much as I can everywhere else until I have the most war score, which is problematic and difficult, and maybe it'll be easy to just give everything to the Soviet Union and then kill the Soviet Union. But I do have some plans, we'll see. So much artillery. Let's do the Buffalo's fly swatter. It also gives us access to this. Now, if we stack all those bonuses to military factory construction, it's gonna be made instantly, but we'll have no stability. Anti-tank. The French Scalder fleet and Vichy France is next. Oh, right, good thing I wasn't justifying on Vichy France then. Was my justification? Almost there. Got the German cipher, excellent. Now, I could modify this even further to get more war spot and more military factory construction speed. But at this point, it will cost me a significant amount of stability, so I don't think I want to. Also, I'm missing steel. Limited exports. Speaking of stability, let's increase it a bit with other focuses. Anti-air 3. Ah, and justification is complete. Let's declare war on Hungary. And I'm not calling any allies. I don't want my puppets involved. At least not yet. I might take their troops. We'll see. All right, Italy has been called in. And ball-bearing trade is cancelled. Let's kill Germany. And actually, with all the bonuses we have as Sweden, this should be quite easy. Go. As you can see, this is going quite splendidly, even over crossing. What are our values. 36.9 attack bonus from just the country bonuses. All right, so far so good. This is going perfectly. Once we've acquired a longer front line, I'll send more troops here. Actually, let's modify this order a bit. I don't want to kill them yet. I want to accumulate a lot of war scores, so let's do it like this. Something like that. More doctrines. Sadly, doing damage is valued, in my opinion, too highly in the calculation. The occupation valued not enough. We'll have to do a lot of damage if we want to overcome the Soviet Union and have the Germans capitulate 
capitulate solely to us. UK attacks Iraq, and they joined the Japanese. Interesting. You destroy this tank. Oh, I forgot to use the German cipher. See how easy it is? It was not even necessary to use the cipher. Advanced artillery upgrade. Ooh, doubles hard attack for artillery. Nice. Should I go down to balanced? Hmm, probably not. I don't want them to push too hard down here. So what we'll do is send these guys here without an attack order. Switch you to balanced for now. Hold for a moment. And then I'll push into the sides while retaining the center. Are you there yet? Yes. So now half of you go here and attack down this way. And the other half of you go here and attack towards the Soviet Union. And more importantly, take out the Balkans. On balance this time. I'll be adjusting as we go. Because sadly, I need to accumulate all the war score. Taking out Romania and Hungary will help with that. We've researched most of the stuff I wanted to research. Oh yeah, how about some railway guns? Let's go that way too. At this point, it turns out my troops are so powerful that we don't really need to worry about not being able to capitulate Germany, only about acquiring enough stuff beforehand. Go back to being aggressive, so we move faster. And we'll be adjusting where they go and what they do by just modifying the front lines. Extra stability from this, please. Also, long hours get paid? Sure. And utilize domestic film industry. And war bonds. All good. Now to reiterate, I am purposely not pushing down into Nuremberg, Munich and so on, because I want to accumulate a lot of war score before we actually defeat Germany, so I can take all of it. We're up to 6%, which is not enough, because the Soviets have 58. And this says I'll get compliance, but it's a lie. It's not working properly. I will not get the compliance unless I'm the one with the highest war score. Boost the infantry equipment. What else to research? Boost our support companies. Also, let's switch you guys to the proper template. We do have the capability to do so. And you can join the attack. Hmm, which one? The one going towards the Balkans. It's more pressing. We want to get there before the Soviets do. And you guys stay where you're supposed to be. We took Frankfurt. I didn't want you to take Frankfurt. But it's fine. They're still not capitulating. Just make sure to not take Vienna by accident. Once we connect to Switzerland, it'll be a bit easier to keep this contained. Like this. I actually didn't leave enough troops here to secure this properly, but it's not really an issue. If they push through a bit, we'll just go back and forth, and that's even better, because we'll deal more damage. See, we've taken almost all of Germany, and we only have 9%, because the Soviets uh, took more casualties, and that counts for more. Uh, I think this should be adjusted a bit. Are they pushing back? They're trying to. See, there are some empty spaces, but they're too afraid to try and take care of that. I could assign two armies here, I suppose, but I don't really have the manpower. Okay, let's go to all adults. Uh, didn't really want to do it, but kind of have to. Let's make him charismatic. Oh, they are pushing back. Well, in that case, I need to send more troops this way. You. This will do. Are you in France? Well, up to 11%. I still don't think they would capitulate to me. Oh, no. The UK's landing in Italy. They always spoil my plans. The UK. Iran capitulates. Not a problem. Advanced fire bases. Swedish Finland. Oh, change autonomy level to Nordic Defense Council member? What? Oh, that's how it works. Sure. Can they use... Can we, can we use the focus tree now? Mm, no. Maybe if I... Did I cancel my faction? No. No, they need to be independent for this, apparently. Oh, well. I'll take this bit to liberate my unit. All right, hold the line. Well, we acquire war score. Oh, Germany has capitulated, but I did not push them more. So does it mean I was actually the one who... Yes! Okay, it worked. Finally. So, see, what happened was I wasn't the one they were going to capitulate to, so the reduced capitulation threshold was not applied. Now that we've dealt enough damage to Germany and got enough war score to actually be the one they would capitulate to, the threshold has kicked in and they capitulated to us and I have my compliance. Excellent. So my plan actually worked and I can actually create a collaboration government of Germany right now and I'll get all of it in the peace conference essentially for free. Now I could try and delay this a bit to maybe take Vienna because I'm not currently controlling Vienna. It's a risk though because if Italy capitulates before I'm done, hmm, I don't think they will. We're almost there. Let's push a bit more. Make sure we get Vienna. Also, hey, with all that collaboration, just he see how many military factories we have from Germany. Make some more anti-air and some more artillery. We have our blessing. They will have our blessing in a moment. Once I take Vienna, just this bit should be enough. Because this state is controlled by the Germans and I want to control all their core states. But we can't let Italy capitulate before that and the Allies are close to Rome. So let's monitor that too. You get Vienna yet? Not yet. We got Vienna and we are the controller of the state. I think it should work since we are the controller. Should I take the remaining provinces as well? Let's do it just, just to be sure. It won't take that long. Also monitor Italy. Damn it. Mussolini is deposed. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? Is Italy going to capitulate yet? Doesn't look like it, so we're still good. Oh yeah, and take this bit. Fall of Rome. Still not capitulating. Okay, that's fine. Now, to be absolutely clear, I don't think I need to take these two provinces and this one, uh, but I'm going to risk it since Italy is not capitulating yet. All right, got this one. Now the one in the south. Is it necessary? Probably not. Fall of Rome. 
and this is controlled bias it's Tyrol it's not that many factories you know what I'm sure we'll get Vienna it's more valuable than Tyrol so we'll use this as an experiment now I am listed as the controller of this so theoretically it should go to me does it we'll see collaboration government of Germany please now yes it did go to me excellent owner is Swedish Germany and let me tell you why this is amazing because when the peace conference comes I don't have to pay for this this is already mine because we created the collaboration government during the war it's one of my favorite things to do in the game right now we can safely finish the war I don't actually want to capitulate Italy too quickly because that would stop me from getting even more war score so instead I'm gonna use all my strength to push into the Balkans as much as we can no need to go into the Soviet Union actually let's redo all the orders with the exception of these two so this one army is just going to guard this bit so Italy doesn't push back and the rest of you the ones who are unassigned are going to push into the Balkans very very heavily it's not that long until Italy capitulates so let's just make sure to get as much war score as we can we'll use it to get other stuff in the meantime extra stability please and I can trade ball bearings with Spain I don't really feel like it right now then again it's free military experience so let's do that push into Slovakia and Hungary hey army experience boost artillery even more oh you guys are acting aggressively as well I don't really need you to do that but well, maybe once you've taken the German bits original government of the German but I did that already yes you have my blessing again okay Italy fractures into civil war does that make them capitulate yet no it doesn't good no so that's not my enemy right now is it yeah so we can basically abandon this area in a moment once we've taken the German bits same with this then everybody goes to the Balkans we've already won this war now we're just squabbling over who gets what all of the guys from France go here oh I forgot to activate the Italian cipher I mean there aren't any Italians I'm fighting right now I guess we'll decrypt Hungary just 50 days I could push here as well but I really want them to survive a bit maybe I'll take this one because it's mine technically night division 2 the Germans survived here let's take it now this is well fortified territory we'll take some losses going here perhaps I should even be balanced but it should increase our war score significantly well Gary capitulates that's fine hey Swedish Germany my wonderful puppet has only 73 factories well that's not entirely true 73 factories is what they have left after giving me 75% of all their factories which is why I have 577 right now I do love collaboration governments so much then again this attack on the Balkans is much more difficult than the attack on the Germans it is costing me some stuff maybe I should end this war sooner rather than later still not sure now nah, let's get as much as we can so I can capitulate oh, and I'm missing steel well fortunately we have Swedish Germany they'll give me their steel almost for free at least close the capitulation it's possible that when Milan is taken they'll capitulate yeah looks like it maybe we can get some more war score before that happens actually it is it is about to happen so let's push in there as well and they're about to surrender if we can get even a bit more war score let's do it oh Italy capitulates and that's the end of the war isn't it no apparently Hungary is now a great power well I guess good job Hungary so how much war score do we have only 15 percent yeah the Soviets have too much for the land combat damage because we're actually doing the strategic attacks yeah well not important we got our prize we got Germany preemptive strike is pointless now oh, I can force them to give me the islands and we'll get a core alternatively we can get a boost against the Soviets huh actually this might be good because I intend to fight the Soviets soon and the last doctrine here we go right let's finish them off how about just a manual attack for the Hungarian capital and that's it now look at this this is one of the most beautiful sites ever Swedish Germany it's already mine I do not have to pay for it the prison have to pay for Regno del Sud but mine price is bigger and we're up to 22% war score the real question here is do we puppet or do we annex I think puppeting will serve us better let's see what the world looks like ugly British Italy yeah you did get a lot out of this war I got more Swedish France Soviet stuff in the south of France check the fact map mode yeah, I got half of France Netherlands Belgium and all of Germany and bits of Africa and some islands here and there well now it's time to crush the common turn let's unpause so the factories can be recalculated and all that 467 factories majority from Swedish Germany I could use some more manpower let's go back to a healthy mix of civilian and military industry my lovely German puppet is going to benefit from a lot of new construction some civilian lots of military excellent it is now time to crush the Soviet Union there aren't really going to be any troops here so I don't need to spend that many units now where do we go through do we go through Finland or do we go through Poland and Czechoslovakia you know I could just not call in Germany and the Soviets would have to guarantee all these borders while we just attack from Finland I think that's exactly what I'm going to do although I should boost the supply in the area some supply depots and boost all the railways in the area yeah we'll just attack from Finland but really have manpower for more troops I could use the German ones but I do not have enough army experience to set up a proper template how much manpower do you have a million yeah that will do and this border is very 
very secure because I just don't have to call Germany and get in position, everybody. Oh, and the navy. I could do naval invasions. I don't need to. What I need to do is guard myself against their naval invasions. I do have a large fleet. We got some ships in the peace conference. Should be enough to guard the Baltic. Well, technically they could go around here as well, but they shouldn't do that. But sure, I guess I'll guard the north as well. This should keep us safe. Now that we have so much artillery, how about I add some more? Can we afford to do that? Yes, definitely. This will increase soft attack very significantly. Sure, yeah, extra artillery. Now my spy got imprisoned. 100% collaboration in the Soviet Union. That's gonna simplify things a bit. And we'll beat up the Soviets from the north, and we can take out Poland, Czechoslovakia, Romania, and Hungary on this side. We have loads of puppets. I guess I'll take them. Let's justify on Moscow. 90 days. So my auto rifles, please. I wonder if I can activate this if I'm the aggressor. And taking Leningrad will force them to white piece us or suffer the consequences. I wonder how that works in an offensive war. You guys ready? Almost. Oh no, you guys are exiled and you're not moving home. Why? Get into our territory quickly. Let's do the Swedish tiger and boosts our intelligence a bit. Speaking of which, let's boost it a bit as well. And I can become the spy master of my own faction. Now I only have puppets, so I think this will do nothing, but let's check. It did do something. Cool. He's up on conscription. No, thank you. I'm going to be at war before this happens. I need that manpower, sadly. I mean, I could use German. I suppose. National uprising, what are you doing? Okay, good. I thought they were gonna put themselves in a civil war or something. Let's see what templates the Germans have for me. This is decent enough. I could use that. Let's copy the infantry template 6. I really have the army experience to modify it properly. Give it the bear symbol. And I suppose we'll make an army group of those. Deploy more small cavalry units and we'll switch them. The Soviets are defending themselves. I think I should be superior. Well, that's a big boost to our artillery. Add a policy. Same with our infantry guy. Mechanical genius will do nicely. Who do we have in high command? Organization expert. That's Fine. Equipment? Lots. And this is a very nice focus, but it is going to cost me 16% stability. I can't really afford that right now. I want to do this, but we don't have a single ranger. Soviet operator, please. Let's go down here, because it will boost our intelligence agency a bit. Deploy. Switch to the German template. Here's our new army group. Who shall lead it? Go make a good field marshal. We do need some more commanders, but we're lacking command power. Promote them. Oh well, this will have to do for now. You guys go take care of France for me. And I'll modify their template with recon and the field hospitals, because manpower is a precious resource for me. So it's communism failing, yes. Like all communism. Reinforcements. Now, technically, I do not need to take out France. Maybe it would be better to not fight them and just focus on the Soviet Union in the Soviet Union. Yeah, that's the smart thing to do. Everybody just get here. I did build enough supply for two army groups, I think. And be super aggressive. We can afford to. Cancel all the orders in France. They're safe. I'm just not going to call France in. That's one of the upsides of puppets. You can use them as buffer states if you don't call them to war. Justification is ready. Are we all ready? Mostly. Oh, I feel martial. Offensive doctrine and charismatic. And organization. We already have our war goal, but I'll wait for my guys to get in position. Also, everyone be aggressive. Why are my guys not taking care of this area? I put them on patrol, but I want to conserve fuel. Ah, it's fine. I'm guarding the ports anyway. The Germans are sending some expeditionary troops. That's nice, but I prefer to rely on colonial ones. I think we're good to go. Declare war on the Soviet Union. Do not call anyone in. Ball bearing trade cancelled. Yes, it was inevitable. Actually, let's give the Germans some more artillery. And I'm calling in Finland, as well as the guys up here. Although, theoretically, I don't have to call these guys in and the Soviets will have no way of getting into my territory. Now, I intend to win this and a longer front line is actually advantageous to me. So, you get called in and you get called in. Now, kill some Soviets for me. Wonderful. Calling in Mongolia. Now, the AI will not attack your puppets unless they have a separate reason to. Because technically, they could just declare war on Germany and France, but they're not doing that. Which means my borders here with Soviet Poland, Soviet Czechoslovakia and Soviet France are safe, while they are most likely garrisoning all these borders just in case I call the puppets to war. This way, I'm spreading their forces thin while concentrating my forces. Now, can I take the decision to... Oh yeah, defend Finland. <laughs> this is a bit of an exploit, isn't it? I'm gonna defend them in the war that I started. I wonder if the white peace thing will happen. I don't really want it to happen, but I wanted to see what this does. So let's accept it. We're going to boost our troops and it's gonna boost Finland. Are the Soviets going to be forced? Okay. They called in Soviet France, but Swedish France is not called in, so it doesn't matter. Now, when I take Leningrad, it's possible I'll be forced to do a white peace. If that happens, Happens, I can just attack them again. I'm really curious to see if that is enforced if I'm the attacker, like now. Yes, they're calling everyone in. Not a problem for me. So far, so good. We have supplies, they don't have supplies. Now, what happens when I get Leningrad? That's the big question. Oh, lower autonomy. Who's these guys here? Sure, I can spare the political power. So, get me Leningrad. What happens? Well, damn, that's not really good, is it? 
Soviet Union surrenders. Am I still at war? We're not. Ah, well, at least we get a persistent boost. Division recovery rate 10%, organization 2, and reinforce 2. That's good. It's permanent, isn't it? Well, it should be here somewhere. Regardless, um, well, now I know. I didn't have a choice if I want to sign the white piece, but I suppose I forfeited that choice by selecting the decision. Do I still have my war goal? No. How long does the truce last? For a long time. Well, do I have a truce with all your subjects? Maybe I could attack someone else? Well, that is a significant delay, and we can't attack them again until the truce is up, which is half a year. Okay, let's start just fine now so I don't forget. When the truce is over, we attack again. At least I'll have the time to train the Germans up a bit. At least now, I know. And extra troops, where did they go? Did the Soviets kill my troops? They shouldn't have. Well, I do have some extras. We can go to this army. I'm gonna switch to Academy Scholarships, because I need commanders. Let's deploy some extra troops. Oh, is Germany out of manpower? Let me see. Well, they are, but they're only on limited conscription. Hopefully they will change that. It was that. Treaty of Brussels. Hmm. France proposes a treaty. Sure. Let's sign a treaty with our subject, France. Check logistics. We have enough of everything. Turkey joins the Allies. That's interesting. We could actually join the Allies, couldn't we? If we dismantled our own faction, we could. And we could use them to fight the Soviet Union. But there is no need for it. I can dismantle the Soviets on my own. Actually, let's give the Germans some more artillery. Why not? Up to 30 combat with. Sure. That's fine. And while we're at it, I'm also going to modify my own unit in the same way. Only it has a bit less infantry. So 28. Mm. Actually, let's reduce the width of the German one as well. Oh, I could use bicycle battalions and everything. Huh. Perhaps I should. It costs quite a lot. And some support equipment. But we can produce more support equipment. It's not really an issue. Let's do that. Get me a lot of support equipment. I think I'll switch to bicycles when the army experience is sufficient. Nothing else I really want to do here. Well, we could do this and this, and, but it would take my stability when I go to war. So I don't really want to. How about we just suppress subjects for now? Oh, we're gonna have strikes again. He's up on conscription. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to do that soon. And then we can go back to all adult serve when the war starts. Because I do want that manpower. Hmm. Germany doesn't seem to have manpower for this. So let's cancel the production and use these expeditionary forces instead. Also, how about a commander on the top of the list? Some more ciphers. Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary. Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary and Romania are done. Yeah, that's fine. You guys infiltrate the Soviet army. Now, in retrospect, I should not have taken the decision. Oh, well, let's trade ball bearings to the, uh, the Soviets again. Steal their army experience. Yeah, yeah, just for a moment. Where was I? I should not have taken the decision to help Finland, but I really wanted to see what happens. We can we can switch to NATO. We can become NATO. <laughs> that's cool. Let's do that. We get an extra operative. So how about we switch to that bicycle militia? Will that actually increase my speed? No, because I'm using towed artillery. Ah, it would if I didn't have the artillery. But I kind of need the artillery. So let's forget the bicycles. Senegal joined allies. Not my problem. Oh, I wasn't when I wasn't looking, Japan got defeated. That's surprising. The allies usually have a very hard time beating them up. Eh, I'm fine with that. Everybody's joining the allies. But I'm not enemies with them. I'm only enemies with Joseph. We could annex Swedish Germany. There's no point annexing collaboration government. They actually work better as a collaboration government because you get almost the same amount of factories and you also get manpower. You should go to extensive conscription though. You really should. Recon company maxed out. Artillery maxed out. Industry maxed out. I guess I'll work on the fuel a bit. Justification's finished. I still have a truce. But that will soon run out. In the meantime, a new commander please. We've been embargoed. Oh no. Stop your exercise. Ready up. We're crushing the Soviets today. Let's do some aircraft research. I know I neglected it. I usually do. But you don't actually need the aircraft if you have enough anti air. Of course it's helpful, especially uh, the uh, CAS. But it's not necessary. Mm, looks like they actually built up the supply down here, but not up here. Railway guns, please. The truce is over. Let's go. Clear war on the Soviet Union. We end the ball bearing trade, sadly. Call in Finland. Sup me. And where are you? Here. Karelia. And go. Yes, they're calling everyone in. Now, once again, they're guarding all these borders here, but I'm not calling in my puppets, so we don't have to worry about that. And we are now NATO. Right. Victory through overwhelming firepower, please. Oh yeah, and use uh, the Soviet cipher. That will help slightly. Now that we really need it, the attack is going quite well. Supply is key, and I did build a lot of it. Soviet France joins us in the war. Doesn't matter. Full of Leningrad again. I cannot overstay the strategic importance of placing your puppets... Um, yeah, sure. Of placing your puppets as uh, roadblocks for the enemy like this. It only works against the AI, but the Soviets surely are having a lot of troops here and here, 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 everywhere. Also in France. Well, I just attacked them from the north. Now, theoretically, I could attack them from all sides. This way, only part of their forces is actually engaging me, not all of their troops. And as you can see, that is quite effective. I think I'll be content to share the world between the Allies and us. New spy? Sure. Can we get another Soviet one? Connect your networks. Good. I have no complaints. Actually, I'm going to have to request territories from my subjects so it doesn't get too weird. But we don't have to do that right away. Also, collaboration governments are
are in effect, so I only need to take half of the victory points. Oh, Finland's doing good. Thank you, Finland, for thinking of this. Connect up the network. We are reaching Poland from the other side. Once again, they're puppets. I don't even have to fight them. If we capitulate the Soviet Union, I can take everything. Good job, Finland. Now take the last bit. Actually, I'm gonna send a unit there. Or maybe even two. The guys in the north have some trouble with supply. Let's rectify that. Just build ports along the coast and that'll be sufficient. And they do build much faster than the supply depots. Come on, kill them. Oh no, the UK attacked the communists. No matter, I should have the majority war score anyway, because of all the damage and occupation I'm doing. No, actually, you know what? I could use this to join the Allies. And again, I will not be NATO anymore. I want to be NATO. But if I join the Allies and take them over... So, do we make it NATO against the Allies? Or do we just take over the Allies? And again, can I even join the Allies? I have generated a lot of war score. I am unsure. Well, you know what? It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna remain NATO, because I want to remain NATO. And we can negotiate with the so-called Allies after we've taken over half the world. How about that? The UK is calling a lot of people in. They stop with the messages. But it doesn't matter, because I'm killing the Soviet Union on my own. 73% was capitulation. My war score is only 93%, but that's enough to get everything. I really like the blue NATO thing, so I'm not going to dismantle it. But just to be clear about what I was intending to do, you can dismantle your faction if it's just you and the puppets, and then, as the Allies are also at war with the Communists, they would accept me into the Allied faction. I have so much industry, and I will have even more after taking the Soviets, and so much manpower, that I could then take over the Allies as their leader, thus putting the world under my rule. However, I think NATO is cooler, so let's not do that. Poland capitulates. Romania capitulates. All to me. Well, actually, it's going to Finland. Does it matter? Transfer the territory to me, please. All of the territory. Alright, you want to keep some for yourself. That's fine. Give me the rest. Transfer it all to me. Please don't crash. Now, is it time for the Soviets to fall? 96% there. Okay, good. Let's just sit back and enjoy the fall of the Soviet Union. That's always nice to see. And there it goes. The Soviet Union has capitulated. And it all belongs to me. Take Soviet territory directly. Puppet Poland. Oh, don't give me all your ships. Is that all the territory in the world? Yes, it is. Let's have a look. It's Scandinavian socialist state. Well, obviously, I did get my collaboration. So let's get a moment. Uh, uranium mining. Yeah, whatever. Give me the puppet state. No, I can just trigger it on my own. By going somewhere down here. Create a collaboration government in the Soviet Union. Do that. And there it is. Swedish Russia. Now, I don't actually want to hold non-core territory. So let's go and to occupy territories, return territory to Swedish France, wait, return territory to Finland, what else? Yeah, you're not getting my territory. And release some minor puppets, like the African territories I didn't really want to go into detail with. When puppeting, release nation, who's next? You, release nation. Denmark, no. Norway, no. Tahiti, sure, why not? And Tunisia. And that's it. We're up to 700 factories. Is that the most in the world? Let's have a look at the US. And the United Kingdom, yes, we have way more. Now, this might not look super pretty, but if I do this with the factions map mode, well, that's much better, isn't it? Well, yeah, I could have taken the Allies, but I like being NATO. So, that's it. Sweden is truly overpowered. We killed Germany with no trouble whatsoever. Well, I did build myself up until 1942, but still, it was a good run. And, you know, I really like what they did with the game. Not necessarily all the super powerful modifiers from the Scandinavians, but uh, especially the companies, because you can customize what you're specializing in. And, well, I haven't actually tried an infantry-only run in this version with all this maxed out, but I think it might be viable, even though artillery is just so good. And I'm having fun with the game again, and that's just priceless to me. Because for a time, I wasn't having fun. And I think you all felt that. Well, I'm glad that's over. So let me know what you think, and which country I should play. I'm not going back to the spreadsheet right now, because I want to try out all the new focus trees. But suggestions will still be logged, so if you want something in particular, do let me know in the comments. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I will see you again soon. Goodbye.